Snakes that constrict and then swallow enormous prey have evolved a way to keep themselves from suffocating while they do it. When the scaly quolls closest to the snake's head are super busy squeezing its dinner to death, the reptile can simply change how it breathes so that it uses ribs and muscles farther down the length of its body. That's according to a new study that used an inflated blood pressure cuff to immobilize different parts of boa constrictors' bodies while simultaneously doing X-ray scans to monitor their ribs movement. What researchers observed is that the snakes could easily shift to using different sets of ribs to draw in air like a bellows. I just found it remarkable that they had such fine control, says the study's author John Capano, who studies biomechanics at Brown University. We see just particular regions of ribs get activated and other regions are completely quiet and don't move. Boa constrictors have more than 200 pairs of ribs running down the length of their bodies, and normally breathe by using muscles to rotate their rigid rib bones and pump air in and do. Like the rest of their bodies, the lungs of a snake are long and stretch down much of the snake's length. The part of the lungs closest to the head is where gas exchange seems to take place, as it is rich in blood vessels, while the part of the lungs closer to the snake's tail is more like an empty bag. When a snake bites and grabs prey, the front part of its body is usually completely engaged in subduing the meal by constricting it. And then, once a snake starts to ingest what is often a large animal relative to its own size, the rib cage has to spread wide open. There's a chance that they can't move their ribs anymore, because they're already at capacity, says Capano. A while back, when he was working in the lab of Scott Boothick at Dickinson College, Capano and Boothick noticed that when they fed snakes, it looked like they were breathing with another section of the body than what you'd see when they were just kind of hanging out on the table at rest, Capano rec. But it wasn't clear whether this represented a true change in breathing on the snake's part. Perhaps, the snakes were always trying to move the same ribs in order to breathe, but the physical demands involved in squeezing and swallowing prey just kept some ribs from being able to do it? That was sort of the beginning of the project, can they control this? Says Capano. In the Journal of Experimental Biology, Capano and a team of researchers describe how they put blood pressure cuffs on different parts of snakes' bodies to basically prevent the ribs from moving. We put like a little tiny helmet on the snake that lets us measure airflow in and out of it, so we could measure that it was breathing, says Capano.